Hi everyone and welcome to Morning Coffee Break. Hope everybody's alright this morning. Today is Saturday, February 26th. Currently it's 36 degrees, much colder than the 52 I believe it was. Let's see, I think it was 52. Yep, yesterday morning. Crazy. Um, and the high today is only going to be 47. And it was 60, no, it was 51 yesterday. It was supposed to be the high, and it got it was 52 yesterday morning. So big difference. Uh, chance of rain, 50%. Humidity, 75% right now. 5-mile-per-hour winds. And air quality is 52. That's moderate. Okay. Uh, today, there will be an Aldi haul. That we went we went to get a couple things and I thought there was some interesting stuff you'd like to see um, on that haul uh, and a taste test with Mike I did I tried something that we got at at uh, Aldi and it is green pea crisps so definitely check that one out much healthier uh, snack um, Last night I fixed cheeseburgers and fries. Oh my gosh. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, they were great. And uh, tonight, what's for dinner is spaghetti and salad. And with some of the sourdough bread that I showed um, that we got at Aldi. It's, it's, in, it's really, I can smell it from here. It's everything sourdough got the everything seasoning on it so it's loaded with i can't see it without my glasses there you go here loaded with toasted sesame seeds poppy seeds onion and garlic oh god i can smell it we're gonna have some of this i believe we'll toast it uh with our spaghetti tonight we usually have garlic bread, so that'd be perfect. Okay, let me show you. Oh, yeah, I got a picture of Joy. She usually won't uh, let us take a picture of her uh, unless she, like, didn't know she you, it was being taken of her or something. But I finally got her to take a picture, and she, it looks great. This is my sweetheart. And like that sign up there, let's stay home. So... She probably didn't want me to show that, but I'm proud of it. And here's last night's dinner. Oh my gosh, y'all gotta watch that short. I did a short on this. Oh, it was so good. And those seasoned fries from Aldi are my favorite fries now. I just love them. Okay, let me get this. Okay, is there anything else here? No. Um, yeah, we'll be we'll be able to go back and get some more things after the fir uh, first or third, somewhere around in that area. Um, we're not going to be going to the grocery store as much um, because of gas too, and you know not and and also you know because of uh, COVID and Omicron. But, but, but also because of the gas prices going up, and uh, we're going to try to get, we're going to try to plan things. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups every every morning. But it seems like I get them. We're going to try to plan out our meals better. We're going to inventory our freezers. We haven't done that in a long time. No, we haven't inventoried them this year so far. So I definitely. Uh, want to do that inventory them so we can see what we got and plan our meals out and be more efficient about it and not go running back to the store back and forth back and forth to get certain things for meals and stuff we'll know what we've got and if we do that before we go to the store we'll know some things we might need to go with those meals you know to fix those meals and be able to get it all be much more efficient about it and 
like I said, save some money on gas. Um, even though you know, our car gets great gas mileage, you know, it we're, we're spending way more, uh, or we were until recently, we were spending more on gas than we have in a while. Of course, in the summer, we have to buy gas for the mowers and stuff. That, you know, that, that's something you have to do. Because that's going to be expensive if it keeps getting higher this summer just mowing the yard. It's going to get to be where it's expensive. Okay, time for today's tidbits, everyone. Over 80 starving manatees in rehab across U.S., officials say. And they've actually got a picture of a manatee this time. Last time, I guess they couldn't find a stock picture of a manatee, and they had a whale on there. I know that's what it was. I, I watched uh, enough nature shows and stuff like that to know that that wasn't a manatee. So this time they got one. It says, uh, around 80 manatees rescued from Florida waters are in rehabilitation centers across the U.S. as officials try to stop their starvation deaths. The state has provided $1.2 million for the treatment effort. The rise in manatee deaths is due to the disappearance of seagrass, which manatees feed in winter. Seagrass disappeared due to polluted water. See, I mean, they don't, they can't do anything about it. It's not like they can go through a drive-thru somewhere and get some food, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, or even find, they, that's what they eat and have for ever since they were around, you know, ever since they were in existence. So pollution's destroyed. What are you doing? Kitty, don't do that. Hey, come over here. Come over here. Hear me out. Come here. What, are you wanting to play or something? Get in front of the heater here. It's a little colder in here. She's right down here. Um, yeah, I mean, I could talk about that for a while. It's just very, you know, irritating. Okay, and here's another thing. Ethanol more harmful to environment than thought. Huh? So they put ethanol in all our gas, and it's even worse. It says a study in proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences say that corn-based ethanol mixed in with gasoline is a larger contributor to global warming than gasoline alone. This is because ethanol is 24% more carbon intensive than gasoline. The study contradicts earlier research that said ethanol and other biofuels are better for the environment. They're, they're worse for the environment. Uh, I'm sure big bucks was behind all that, you know, to push that in. And, and it's not, and it's, can you imagine how many engines it's ruined, like uh, even mowers, especially mowers, uh, that, that, that aren't made to use ethanol. And then you put it in there, and if you don't put something in it to contradict it, there's like a stable or something, this stuff for ethanol, I'm not sure what it's called. You can put it in there, it can ruin your, your uh, mower, believe me. And uh, even other things, you know, I mean, it's just other things that run on gas, it can, it can be bad for weed eaters, this or that, you know, if it's got ethanol in it and it's not made to use ethanol. So... I get aggravated sometimes. I try not to talk a whole lot about different things. I could, I could talk about them for a long time, you know, especially with the environment, you know. I mean, it's just aggravating. Okay, difference between shelf cloud and wall cloud. I mean, we're causing our own problems, really. Uh, even though both shelf and wall clouds are associated with severe storm activity, they have different characteristics. A shelf cloud is a wide, low-hanging base of a 50 to 200 mile long, elongated thunderstorm. It has scary looking cloud features. Wall clouds are associated with a rotating storm or tornadoes that bring hail and damaging wind gusts. Bad weather delays delivery to Alaska store by two months. The Kanika's Market is a small convenience store in Utkwakvik, Alaska. I don't know. Uh, it's spelled U. T <laughs> it's spelled U. 
It's spelled U-T-Q-I-A-G-V-I-K. Y'all know how to pronounce that? Utkaikovic. Uh, that sells Asian food products. Product deliveries to the store were nearly two months late this winter, resulting in financial losses and fewer food options for the community. Normal product transportation was disrupted by unexpected precipitation and freezing temperatures. Snowmobilers stuck in Saginaw Bay ice in Michigan rescued. How many, how many have I done on this? You know, that's expensive to have a crew rescue people that are, don't have the sense to stay off certain areas or out of certain areas where avalanches are. I, I don't, I don't understand why they would. <laughs> the U.S. Coast Guard rescued two people Friday after their snowmobile plunged through ice at Saginaw Bay in Michigan. The survivors were wearing purpose-built cold water exposure suits, which greatly increases the chances of survival in such situation. Well, at least they were prepared to uh, for an emergency, so they might have known, oh, this could happen. Maybe we should wear these special suits. The Coast Guard warned people that the conditions are deteriorating in major waterways in the state. So they were warned, and they put on special suits to make sure that they could rescue them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Can't you find somewhere else to riot safe? You know, I'm sure there's been plenty of snow everywhere. Uh, helium shortage in, up north, further up north. Now, it hadn't been as much snow here. We've been pretty mild winter. Uh, helium shortage... NWS to reduce weather balloon launch. To reduce? NWS Florida will switch from twice daily weather balloon launches to once per day from March 1 due to rampant helium shortage. Helium is necessary to lift the weather balloons that carry a box of instruments, instruments called a radio sonde, critical for weather prediction. NWS said the reduction of balloon launches will not impact severe weather operations. <coughs> so now there's a helium shortage. Oh, Maine police trooper stops car with a foot of snow on top. <laughs> Amid snow accumulation, you know, that can come off. I've seen it happen. Uh, I hate to go on about everything, but these just get to me different ones. If you leave that on there and you're going down the road, that can, I've, I have seen it and I've had it kind of happen to us too, but not real bad. That'll, that, if you get going fast enough or it's windy, that'll flip that off right behind you and cause the person behind you to maybe wreck. So that was very inconsiderate of other motorists not to clean that off. It wouldn't have been that hard really to clean that off. Get you a broom or something, some kind of something, and just push it off, you know, or, or scoop it off, whatever. Amid snow accumulation across New England on Friday, a black Honda sedan with one foot of snow piled on its roof was stopped by a Massachusetts trooper. Good. The driver was urged to clean off the car as snow falling off from it could cause accidents. I hadn't even read that yet. Uh... Officials also implored all drivers to remove snow and ice from their vehicles before hitting the road. It can definitely cause accidents. That's a lot of snow, and it's heavy too. And but, but the wind, like once you get going, it, it'll just pull it right back off some of it or all of it. The person behind you would not be able to see where they're going and possibly wreck. They slam on their brakes. The person behind them hits them in the back. I mean, I'm glad they got stopped. Some of these just get to me sometimes. Uh, on this day in 1958, series of tornadoes batter Mississippi. Let me get a drink of coffee. Seven tornadoes tore through Mississippi on February 26, 1958. An F3 tornado touched down near Crystal Springs and traveled 69.7 miles, causing severe damages in Luckney. The twister resulted in 26 injuries and 8 fatalities. Another F3 twister struck near Harrisville and traveled 
71 miles damaging structures. This twister killed one person. Well, that's awful. Couple gets married during snowstorm in Worcester, Maine, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Amanda and Ryan Kane from Worcester, Massachusetts did not let strong, the strong snowstorm in the state stop them from getting married Friday. The couple got married at the Worcester City Hall on Friday morning, even as multiple inches of snow fell right outside. The newly married couple was elated and said that the snowstorm made the occasion great. Well, I can't say anything bad about that, I don't guess. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they were, you know, got married and was able to still get married even though it was bad. Um, and this is something crazy, too. Um, for y'all that live in North Carolina, I'm sure you may have heard about this already. Storm-triggered winds collapsed 40-ton bridge arch in North Carolina. Look at that thing. I wish I had a picture of it, what it you know, look like when it... Strong winds caused by storms on February 18 collapsed a massive 40-ton bridge arc in Hickory, North Carolina. The city mayor, Hank Guest, said the incident happened overnight, which, thank God, and no one was injured. It could have been bad if it happened during the day. Uh, the collateral damage to, to the surrounding areas also appears minimal. However, there is an investigation underway regarding this arch collapse. Hmm. Surely nobody did anything to make that collapse. I, I would hope not. Okay, that's, I showed that. All right, everybody. <laughs> that's it for today's tidbits. Sorry I got so worked up about some of them. You know, it's just, use your common sense, people. I mean, good grief. You know, I mean, I don't know. People just don't seem to think much these days, a lot of them. I mean, the, from the things that I've done for, for you know, tidbits, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty like, duh. <laughs> okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's morning coffee break. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button and share this out today. Also subscribe if you haven't already and hit that So you get all my videos as soon as they come out. I've been doing this bell so long, I'm pretty good at it. I can do different sounds, you know, and stuff for y'all. Like, or. I'll work on it. Maybe I could get a bunch of bells and do like a song. All right, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you later on with a Aldi haul you want to see. It's not a big haul, but there's the interesting stuff in it. And uh, taste test with Mike on an Aldi, what was it? The Green Pea Crisps. So everybody have a great day and God bless.